What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video by Adrian Weather Forecast. And for those who know, it is August 2nd, meaning this is my second day for my fall and winter week here. In this video, we're going to be doing another fall forecast, and tomorrow will be my last video related to fall, and then I'll have three straight days on winter. So in this video, I'm going to talk about who can see the snowiest fall this year here for 2021. So I'm going to have a map basically from like just three colors, basically showing you where I think we'll be seeing the snowiest fall based on people people's average obviously not like overall just based on average so if you are interested in that then make sure to subscribe to the channel watch the whole video and if you really enjoyed it be sure to smash that like button in tomorrow's video i'll be doing who will see the coldest fall if you also want to know about that i recommend you have the post notification icon so you can get notified as soon as that video comes out so let's now go and get a look here at the actual 3.4 index region values and obviously we are getting very close or not I wouldn't say very close but we're getting closer to La Nina characteristics for La Nina status so obviously you have to wait a few weeks for it to actually be confirmed to La Nina. We are still at La Nina watch so it's definitely very very interesting but we have had a large large dip here in status as the equatorial pacific is cooling off more than it is warming up we do still have some pretty warm waters near the nino one plus two region just northwest of south america that's the one thing that's really holding us back overall pacific wise uh but we are definitely seeing a pretty big drop and it's most likely going to rise up a little bit more as the nino one point or one plus two region kind of stays warm but obviously, 3.4 alone kind of helps us get a better idea of La Nina, and it's definitely dropping 3.4 alone, which is why it's dropping so much. But there are still a little bit more average waters that are kind of holding it back a little bit, but it's definitely getting very close to status, La Nina status. And like I did say in my first video yesterday, we can very well have an official La Nina by policy early October, and that will allow for a whole season full of La Nina effects. So let's now get a look here at the actual SSTs here so you guys can get an idea where we're getting the actual status number from. So here's a 3.4 region, kind of really large region. Because then you have the 4 region, I don't think, there's no 3 region. And then you have the uh, 1 and 2 region as well. Actually, never mind, there is a 3 region. I don't know where I got that from. But here, here's a 3.4 region, very large. And you can see that's really the coolest region we're seeing right now, basically nearly a negative 0.3. So we are definitely getting towards the status right there. Uh, definitely very close as these waters are cooling off further than they are warming up. Like I said, there is still a lot of areas of warmer waters around that region, which is why the status is kind of remaining stationary at this point. However, with really watch that, if we really want to get a La Nina, and possibly even a moderate La Nina, we're really going to have to see these waters near the 1.2 or 1 plus 2 region really, really cool down uh, quite a bit here. Because we're seeing some extremely warm waters off areas near Ecuador and Colombia. And those are definitely why the 1, 1 plus 2 region is actually at a positive status. So that's definitely a pretty big factor. Overall, 3.4 region is going to a nice cooling trend at the moment, even though there are still spots of warming water. But at this point, we are expected to get a La Nina by possibly October. So let's take a look here at the actual summary. This actually did come out today. So this is actually our latest Enzo summary forecast. So again, here we are at a La Nina watch. Uh, SSTs are near to below average across most most of the Pacific Ocean. And when you kind of mean when they mean Pacific Ocean, they kind of mean Equatorial Pacific Ocean because obviously there are some really warm waters near the Hawaii region, and obviously just off of Mexico where we have the Eastern Pacific. But the Equatorial Pacific is where we're seeing those near to below average waters. And when we see the nears, because we obviously have some pretty big areas of average or warmer waters, so it's obviously not really necessarily all below average, but it's mostly below average across the Pacific Ocean, which is why we're getting a deepening lower value here. But Enzo Neutral is favored through the Northern Hemisphere summer. Obviously, summer is basically has an additional two months, so there's really no chance that we're going to get an official La Nina by that time, by the time it's over. And La Nina potentially emerging during September and November time period. So there is a chance, a 51% chance we see a uh, neutral continue into the August and portions of early in early fall. However, there is a greater potential that we have a La Nina emerging by the September, October, or November season. So there is a chance that we get a neutral possibly by portions of uh, portions of the area of I guess mid fall is basically we'll really be watching out which is it will allow for much of the other portion of the fall and early winter to see La Nina type characteristics uh possibly with the lower um Roswell waves and overall and a 66 percent chance that this uh possible La Nina continues into late fall into early winter 
So let's actually get a look here at the Nina region SST departure uh, by obviously looking at degrees Celsius. Uh, so looking at the, basically the past week, and actually these values are a bit different, actually a bit more, I guess, bigger difference compared to the tropical tidbits regions because actually they have the new 3.4 at a negative 0.4 degrees Celsius. So actually that's a de obviously 0.1 degrees Celsius from being an official or at least La Nina value. Obviously it's not going to be official for another three or four weeks and has to stay obviously below that for a while. But... Look at Nino you know, 1 plus 2, there's 0 0.8 degrees Celsius. Look how warm it is off south, uh, Northwest America, South America, like I did say, obviously. Nino you know, 3.4, of course, are one of our coldest regions with Nino you know, 3 as well. Our second coldest, basically, we're kind of tied. And then Nino you know, 4, it's a little bit less cooler. But again, the biggest air we're seeing, that warmer air, it's kind of right here, you know, Nino you know, 1 plus 2. And as well, Nino you know, 4, we have those areas of warmer waters. Let's now look here at the actual Enzo outlook and the actual probability for the future months as we get closer to fall. So obviously right now we have a very high chance for June, July, and August to continue to see a neutral. We have basically around 85%. At this point it should be 100%, but obviously they don't really do that. Um, so in now uh, July, August, September, that probability for Enzo stays r remaining over 50%, but it's still... A uh, pretty big drop from over 80% to nearly now maybe maybe 63%. So that's still a pretty significant drop uh, within a month or two. And that line year probability as well increased up to be 30%. And then once we get towards August, September, and October, that's the probability we have 51% for a neutral uh, for a neutral here as we go into the early uh fall time period which we saw in the discussion in the summary but by september october and november now we're going to get up to around a 55 percent for a neutral so there's a definitely good chance as we get towards either september or uh, even october we can very well possibly see a greater probability for la nina and then by october november december and november Dece december and january we're going to get really high probabilities for La Nina getting up to around 60 plus percent. Actually, what was it? 66 percent. It's what they had for the late fall and early winter time period. And as we go further into winter near February and March, that probability will stay still favor La Nina, but a neutral probability will be increasing. And again, there we see the majority kind of having it around hanging around a neutral. However, there is still a good chance that further models are keeping it at a La Nina for the future months as we get towards October and November. So for those who keep hearing me mention La Nina or El Nino or just neutral and you guys don't really know exactly um, what it really means or what it brings to the United States. So let's actually, let me show you guys what they typically bring in the uh, United States. So, so here's a look at the La Nina. So here you can see uh, the two jet streams here. You see first the kind of the polar jet stream kind of coming from the Arctic and dipping into the United States to bring in that really nice cold air. And then you have that variable Pacific jet stream or subtropical jet stream that brings in a lot of moisture. And it's going to actually allow, once it dips in, to bring in not, mo not only moisture for the Pacific Northwest, but as well as some moisture there for the Ohio Valley and Tennessee Valley. So actually, typically, when you see these two jet streams kind of form, you kind of see the Rosby wave kind of dipping down like that. So you're going to be seeing a high pressure here and a low pressure form down here. So when you see these two streams kind of converge together, you're going to be seeing some really nice stormy weather, whether it's a nice snowstorm, whether it's uh, extreme rain. So that's kind of what you're going to be seeing here. Once it actually goes north, we're going to be seeing, uh, you're going to be seeing, I believe, uh, what is it, negative vorticity. Uh, no, no, no. I believe it's positive vorticity is what you will see there within the high pressure. That's going to bring in some nice cold, dry air. That's going to eventually dip into the United States. But then you have that jet stream there. Pacific jet stream is going to bring that moisture. So we're going to be seeing possibly at this point. That's why La Niñas are very common to bring in snow across the Rockies and Pacific Northwest. And as well as some large snowstorms, cross-country snowstorms that eventually go into the Great Lakes and portions of the Midwest. Uh, however... Typically, since you don't have the Pacific jet stream or uh, subtropical jet as far south as we would see in El Nino, that allows for dry and hot conditions to remain in place for portions of the south, central, and southeast United States, and as well even southwest United States as overall. And then the exact opposite happened in an El Nino, basically. So here's looking at the El Nino. So obviously, there you have that polar jet stream that we obviously saw in place earlier on. So basically with the Rosby wave, it's going to be seeing, oh, let's see here. So it's going to kind of probably uh, dip up like this and down like that, then back up again and 
drop once again. So basically that's why you have a low pressure there, a high pressure there, a low pressure, uh, actually not, I think I did this wrong. So basically overall, I, I know there's going to be a small dip, uh, a small dip there in that Rosby wave because there's that low pressure over there. And that's actually going to be the reason why we see that subtropical jet so far south, allowing for not only some moisture, but as well some cooler and actually as well with the negative Arctic oscillations, uh, polar jets are more likely to kind of avoid British Columbia in the Pacific Northwest and come in from portions of the Great Lakes and dip down to the deep southeast United States. And that's going to allow for some nice stormy weather for the east and as well dry conditions and warm conditions for the west because, again, that uh, subtropical jet's very far to the south. And then you see that polar jet kind of toward the east here. So that's going to favor some snowstorms for the mid Atlantic, southeast, and even south central. So here to look at that at my map based on what, basically half what I talked about and there's obviously another half where I come to make this map but I don't want to make this video too long but basically what I showed you guys is uh, the reasoning for why my map is the way it is. So the light blue color is a uh, possibly uh, snowy, uh, maybe just a few, maybe a snowstorm or two basically so slightly snowy falls basically the light blue, the dark blue is a snowy fall. And in the, uh, again, this is based on average, not overall, this is based on average, and I'll get into that as an example later on. And then that top pink is very snowy false. So for example, let's start off with the light blue color. So I tried to make this as realistic as possible. I know I wasn't really like that last year. I was kind of just all, all over the place last year. I'm going to admit it. But this year, obviously, since I've gone a lot better overall with my maps, I wanted to make this more realistic, which is why you see so many dents in that light blue, because obviously... There's obviously higher elevations in the southwest where you can actually get some snow. For example, Flagstaff or, for example, uh, areas near, um, uh, let's see here, near Carson City, for example. Uh, or even areas like South Lake Tahoe. So that's why there's kind of all over the place. So in this light blue color, I think we're going to be seeing a uh, possibly slightly snowy fall. What that means is you may get slightly more snow than we typically see in an average fall from September 21st to December 21st. So let's say, for example, your average in Amarillo is possibly two inches in the fall. You might, you got, may get two and a half inches, you may get three inches. So that's exactly what that means, slightly snowy fall. So I think it's going to be obviously a really widespread. I would not doubt if we even see a little bit of snow in the southwest this uh, this fall, I think that this La Nina, uh, I guess La Nina characteristics really won't come into play until really the late season, possibly late October, early November. But at that point, I think we will still start to see maybe some cold fronts and possible, uh, this Rosby wave kind of stay, uh, kind of in the central portion of the West United States. And that would definitely allow for possibly maybe some snow. Uh, for this year, especially actually the main area we be watching out for this year will be the late season near December. But for areas like Utah, Arizona, and Nevada, I think you guys definitely have a chance for maybe one snowstorm in the fall, even though it's going to be very warm and dry. I would not have the possibility for one uh, favorable three day, four day time period for a snowstorm. And as well, obviously, it's kind of self explanatory why I have that going all the way up to New England and a portion of the eastern. Uh, portion of the Appalachians because obviously we're going to be seeing some nice cold air there specifically near the areas of New England uh, or not New England sorry of uh, areas like the Great Lakes but obviously that's a different color but overall if like you're near Georgia or it's not the way North Dakota or even Oregon I think we're going to be seeing overall a pretty decent snowy fall obviously there's a lot of areas that it won't get snow at all like Florida or Louisiana this fall and the dark blue color, that's where we're going to be seeing a overall snowy fall. So based on your average, let's say your average in Wisconsin, in Madison, Wisconsin for the month, for the season of fall, is 20 inches. Uh, let's say maybe you guys make it 25 inches or 28 inches. So it's going to be rather snowy compared to your average. And that's obviously going to stay a lot further north, specifically near the northwest and Great Lakes, considering the landing of conditions and overall uh, setup. Uh, climatology we are expecting overall so we're going to be seeing possibly the Rossby waves kind of bringing those nice cold stormy conditions to the north of that Rossby wave which will obviously favor portions of the Great Lakes, Dakotas and even specifically portions in the northern Sierras near uh, Washington and Oregon. I think we can definitely see a pretty snowy uh, late fall such as possibly mainly December really since December is still fall until the last week and a half or so. 
So overall, I think we can definitely see a pretty snowy, specifically lake effect snow for portions of Lake Erie, Lake Huron, Lake Michigan overall, the Great Lakes. I think a lot of that blues, those dark blues specifically near Pennsylvania, New York, and Ohio will mainly be lake effect snow. With the amount of moisture we in the Ohio Valley, possibly in overall some nice cold fronts. I think we can definitely see some snow squalls or even lake effect snow kind of be a pretty big factor overall this year. And I do think with, we will be seeing, obviously this kind of matches up with the hot pink, but the hot, the hot spot for snow or developing or origins of snowstorms will obviously come from the northwest and we'll be seeing some nice cross-country snowstorms and that's why the blue goes to the west where it's the reason that's exactly why it is because i think on the hot pink we're seeing the snowbies fall based on average may see 10 or maybe plus 10 plus inches maybe above average considering that we're going to be seeing landing conditions meaning we're going to be seeing extreme arctic blasts early on across this region typically we see our first snow in the state of Montana, usually the Montana is where the U.S. gets first snow, and it typically happens late September. So I think we can definitely see what we saw last year. I think we saw a blizzard in October, early October. I would not, be, I would not be able to possibly that, that does happen again, and actually more frequently into November, and obviously December. That kind of will calm down a little bit. The Rockies are really a hot spot though for a portion of the early spring near March and April, and portions of the fall season but obviously we're gonna be seeing some really nice hot spots and as these storms move to the uh, east that's gonna allow for a lot of snow in these areas in the dark blue so if you're near yellowstone or uh missoula great falls uh, helena all the way near maybe even jackson wyoming we definitely may see definitely a pretty good winter for you guys